Good morning, language warriors. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome once again to my show. It's Wednesday, it's July 26th, and it's 9.03 a.m. here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Welcome, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Hello, Persephone, hello, uh, Pamela. And Zara and Ahmed and OK. Hello, Dominica and Zach. Hello. Good morning, Tanya. Hello, Rada and Saeed. How is everyone today? This is, oh, you know what? I, I didn't even play my video. <laughs> I forgot to play my intro video. Let me play that for you now. This is Teacher Mark's chat room. I haven't done this live stream in a little while, but we're going to do this one today. And what do we do on Teacher Mark's chat room? We're going to talk. We're going to chat. I'm going to give you a topic, and we're going to talk about that topic. Why? Because you need to practice your English, and you need to practice talking about different topics. So today, we are going to talk about goals. Goals is the topic for today. Right here. So we have four questions for you today about goals. Okay, so listen to me. Listen. If you have other questions for me, if you want to ask me questions about vocabulary or questions about grammar or questions about pronunciation, you can, but you must wait not now, okay? Right now is my Teacher Mark's chat room live stream, and we're talking about goals, okay? Goal, right? <laughs> we're talking about goals, okay? So if you have, if you want to talk about goals, then you can talk about goals, but if you have other questions, I have another live stream after this live stream, and I will take any question on that live stream. But on this live stream, you must stick to my topic. Okay? Sound good? So we're talking about goals today, people. Goals. What? Uh, let's look at our questions. Let's look at our four questions today. Our four questions for today are, number one, what is a goal? Can you tell me what a goal is in proper English? What are your short-term and long-term goals? Tell me about your goals. What are your goals? Do you have any? Why are goals important? Why are goals important? Tell me why goals are important. And finally, question number four today is, are plans and goals the same? Are plans and goals the same? Okay, so let's start with number one. Question number one, tell me, what is a goal? What is a goal? Ashley says a goal is a dream or your dream. 
Ornella says a goal is something that you want to accomplish. John says a goal is what you want to accomplish or achieve. Bellin says goals are the things that you want to achieve. Kevin says goals are a target that you set. Ornella says they are related to a desire that you have. Armageddon says goal is a purpose. Without purpose, we are all meaningless. Hello, Mel. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> uh, Celia says your goal is your dream. Nor, uh, hello, Nor. Um, Ornella says it's something you aim at. Okay, those are all pretty good answers. You know, goals can be, you know, anything that you are trying to get or achieve can be your goal. Okay? So, goals are kind of important, right? That's right, I agree. Without goals, what are you doing with yourself? <laughs> if you don't have any goals at all, what are, what are you doing? Right? Have some goals, people. So, uh, that's good. That's good. Goals, goals are many things to many people. Their dreams, their, 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 the things that you want to achieve. That's good. Okay. So what about question number two? Question number two is what are your short term and long term goals? What are your short term and long term goals? John says, my short-term goal is to lose weight and keep fit. Okay. Ashley says, my short-term goal is to pass the IELTS. I know what you meant, Ashley. It's E. It's I-E-L-T-S. Ornella's short-term goal is retiring next year. Wow, that's a that's a big short-term goal. <clears throat> Armageddon says my short-term goal is to just finish my work. I've been working 10 hours a day. It's endless. That's a lot of work. Hello Talk user 581 says my short term goal is to make money. Celia says I want to go to Tibet or go to America as short term goals. Are those short term goals though C uh, Celia or long term goals? Short term goals are usually things that we do very within a short time. Within a short time. So I think that to go to Tibet and go to America, those might be more like long-term goals. Hello, Chrissy. Hello, Maria. Hachiko says, my short-term goal is to learn English and get fitter and learn new things. <clears throat> Hachiko I think you can say fitter, but I believe that the majority of the time, most people say uh, more fit. Okay, so I don't think that fitter is wrong, but it doesn't sound quite as good as more fit. Okay? Ornella says, my long-term goal is to improve my English. 
Grape says, my short-term goal is to get a new job and improve my oral English. Nancy says, my short goals, my short-term goals is to, or, sorry, Nancy says, my short-term goal is to graduate and get my master's degree. Elaf says, my short-term goal is to travel, uh, do my PhD, and my long-term goal is to live the life I want. Okay. Sophia says, my short-term goal is to be happy and keep smiling every day. I like that. That's a good, that's a good short-term goal. Ahmed says, my short-term goal is to get PMP. What is PMP? I don't know what PMP is. And your long-term goal is to accomplish your own business, or to have your own business, I think you want to say. Ornella says, it takes time to learn a language. It's long, uh, lifelong learning. That's true, Ornella, yeah, although... Language learning is something that requires both short-term and long-term goals. That's part of the reason why I do this live stream. Because goals are important in life, for sure. But yes, if you want to learn a language, then you must have goals. Short-term goals and long-term goals. Ashley says, my long-term goal is financial independence. Rada says, my short-term goal is to speak English fluently, and my long-term goal is to have a good job. Hamza's short-term goal is to sleep early today. Alina says, my short-term goal is to pass the teacher qualification examination, and my long-term goal is to get a desirable job. Alreem says, my short-term goal is to reduce using my phone down to two hours a day. That's, a, that's not very much, Alreem. Uh, but here's what I will tell you. It doesn't matter how much you use your phone. It matters how you use your phone. <laughs> you can use your phone all day if you're using it for productive things. If you're using it to waste your time with stupid games and scrolling and shopping and... Yeah, that you should limit. That's not a good use of your time. Not really. So, but I don't think it matters how much you use your phone. I think it matters how, how you use your phone. Ben C says, my short-term goals are to improve my football level of playing and the languages I study. Okay. Uh, ben C, I think you could probably just you could probably just shorten that and just say, "I'd like to be a better footballer." Okay, football. Remember, always remember, if you're speaking American English, we don't say football; we say soccer. Remember that. If you say football to an American. We think of the ball you carry with the helmet and the pads. Okay, so, um, but, but when you use the term footballer, footballer is only a term used in soccer. We never, ever use the term footballer in America. So if you use the term, I'd like to become a better footballer, then we know you're talking about soccer. <laughs> okay, so you could just say, my short-term goal is to become a better footballer. 
How am I doing? I'm doing fine. Maria says, my one and only goal is to speak English fluently. Sophia says, my long-term goal is to understand what you say completely. Okay. And we're talking about long-term. What does term mean, everyone? When I say short-term or long-term, what does term mean? Yes, so term can have two meanings, right? There are many English terms or terminology, right? So there's one kind of term where we're talking about words, okay? But there's another kind of term when we're talking about time. Yeah, we're talking about time, Okay, a period of time or an, a fixed amount of time is a term, right? So there's the school term and, you know, uh, any kind of, uh, when you talk about long term or short, short term, we're talking about a period of time. Okay, so term has two meanings, okay? Actually, it has three meanings because there is a verb form of it, too. You could say to term something means to give something a name. To give something a term <laughs> is to term. Okay, those are all good answers, everyone. Good answers. Let me, uh, let me make sure. Did I miss any other comments here? Um, Fei Wong says, my long-term goal is to improve my spoken English step-by-step. Step. Bellin says, my, where did it go? Uh, my short-term goal is to push my husband out of his struggling anxiety. Good for you. Um, my long-term goal is to graduate from university and be an English teacher. Okay. My long-term goal is to speak two languages or more. Is it possible to study an MBS in America after finishing a bachelor degree in China? I don't know, Maria. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not an expert in um, whether you can come study here or not. I'm just an English teacher. Xiao Feng says, my short-term goal is to go to the U.S. next, next year in April. My long-term goal is to study... Um, my undergraduate degree in Spain. Ah, PMP is a project management professional. Ah, I have never heard that term before. <laughs> Hello, Abdo. Lola's goal is to find herself. That's a good goal. Good for you. Ashley wants to be a better badminton player. Kool-Aid says Messi plays football in America. Yeah, okay. But uh, which America? <laughs> We're not going to have this argument again. <laughs> what do you call a football player? We call a football player a football player. Football is a different game in America. We call what you call football, we call soccer. Okay? Can I advise the best and most efficient way for you to make oral English very fluent in a short time? Sure. Yes, I can. My advice to you is for you to go here. Go watch my YouTube video, and it will tell you how to do that. Oh, 
Okay, I think I've caught up with all the comments now. Thank you, Hero, for the gift. Thank you, Rashid. Xiao Feng, that's because Wu Hui Shou Zhong Wen, Sui Wu Jie Dao. Uh, Abdo says, my long-term goal is to speak two languages fluently, and my short-term goal is to be a better version of myself. I like that, Abdo. Good for you. My short-term goal is to understand English and speak it like a pro. Okay, good for you, Frank. <clears throat> That's right, Hero. Football in the U.S. is the one with the big brown ball that we carry. That's what we call it here, okay? All right, let's go to our next question. Let's go to our next question, shall we? Why are goals important? Tell me why goals are important. Why are goals important? Hello, Ina. Ornella says goals are important because they give you motivation, uh, curiosity, and the energy to do things. That's a pretty good answer. I like that answer, Ornella. Grazie. Do I know anything about China? No, I don't know. Can you tell me? Ina says goals are our best motivators. Hello, Carlos. Good to see you, my friend. Do I like philosophy? Yes, I like philosophy. Frank says goals are important because they lead you where to go. Fei Wang says they goals encourage us to make progress. Rada says life without goals is meaningless. And Noor says the same. Goals are to fill your life with meaning. Abdo says goals are important because to be a good version of yourself. Because once you become a better version of yourself, everything good will come. I like that, Abdo. Tanya says goals make life a little bit less pointless. <laughs> Tanya, cheer up. <laughs> if you have goals, you have life. If you don't, you you haven't a life. I like that. Which philosophers do I like? Uh, I like many philosophers, but right now the philosopher that I like is me, and we are talking about the philosophy of goals. So, if you want to talk about goals, then talk about goals, because that's what we're talking about. <laughs> Ahmed says, uh, "Goals uh, without goals, there's no meaning to go anywhere. You feel without purpose and like you're stuck in the mud." Flavia says, "Goals maintain your focus." Hachiko says, goals keep you living life, and, oh, where'd it go? And it gives you direction where you should be in the future and what to do in the present. Good. Ina says, if a person doesn't have a goal, they become a lazy bones. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. <笑>何进，何进，我会说中文，可是现在我教他们。这是我的英文课，<笑>好不好？如果你要一起，可以一起，一起<笑> ，together。You come here, join us. We're talking about goals. We're talking about goals. I am not going to answer your questions. You will answer my questions. I'm the teacher. Hi. Oh, so frustrating. Nancy says goals are important because that allows me to work hard today, and I have the、um, the opportunity to improve myself. Yes, Mia. I speak English and I speak Chinese. Misaki says goals are important because they show you a new potential. Sergey, I live in Cincinnati, Ohio. It's in the middle of the United States, in the Midwest. That's my accent. It's a Midwestern Ohio accent. Hero says goals make you self-disciplined and a self-motivated person. Shirin says with goals we have motivation to move forward and do our best to achieve them. Good. <sighs> okay, He Jin, bye, <laughs> bye. Wendy says goals are our hope.、Mm-hmm. Goals, goals can make us hopeful. Yeah, give you hope. Sure. I think without goals, you're going nowhere. I agree, Frank. Because goals can help you do and experience everything you want in life. Lele says.、Uh, Is the American dream considered to be a goal? Ah,、uh, yeah, I I think so, Lele. But the American dream can't be defined because the American dream is really different to every person. The American dream is just I want to go to America because I think it's going to be better. That's basically the American dream. But it's gonna, you know, everybody's idea is a little bit different about how that works. What was my biggest goal?、Uh, my biggest goal is always the same, which is just to improve myself, to be better than the person I was yesterday. That's always my biggest goal. Oh, I like that, Ahmed. Aim for the stars, and if you fail, you'll still land on the moon. I like that. Yeah, I I use the same theory. You know, I I have ten goals, and if I achieve three of them, that's two more than most other people. <laughs> uh, Flavia, do we have tornadoes where I live? Yes, occasionally, occasionally. Hero says goals are important because when you achieve them, you can enjoy beer. <laughs> Cheers to that, hero. Ah,、uh, nor I have many, many, many goals. I am a man full of goals. <laughs> What are my goals? I want to. Uh, uh, well, I. I'm here because I want to have at least one friend in every place in the world. That's my pr- 
probably my biggest goal because my dream is if I do this long enough and I meet enough of you and I make enough friends around the world, one day I hope that I can travel and when I do, I will come to meet you. How's that sound? But I have many goals. I want to continue studying Chinese. I want to build my live streams. I want to finish writing my book. I want to um, help the world understand a better way to learn language. And I do think I have a better way. Why are you reading, uh, uh, what is that? Is that, uh, is that Tale of Two Cities? It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom, it was the season of light. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Hello, ghoul from Turkey. Yes, I'd be, I'd, I would love to have a friend there. I want to go there. Yes, Dickens, I love Dickens. Thank you, Belen. I, I, Madrid is probably going to be the first place I come, Belen. Madrid will probably be the first place I come. Ah, Fluke lives in Tsingtao. Okay. I'd like to go to Tsingtao because I've tried Tsingtao beer. It would be interesting to go to Tsingtao. Can, can, I, can I take a tour of the factory? Do they give tours of the Tsingtao factory? Yes, Lele, my book is about helping you learn English. Yes, my book is about how to learn languages better. And how to learn better, really. Not just languages. Wow, look at all these people inviting me to their homes. <laughs> I feel so special. How much is my book? I don't know yet because I haven't finished it. <laughs> it's hard to write a book. I've never done it before, and it's pretty difficult, but I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm. I have it right here. This is part of my book right here. I'm working on it every day. These are all the parts of my book. So, one day, hopefully I'll be finished. I'm going to try to have a first draft finished by the... Uh, I have a friend coming in September. And when he comes, I'm hoping to have a copy for him to read he he uh he wrote a book too a friend of mine wrote a book and he inspired me to write mine so he's going to come here in september and when he comes here in september i'm hoping i can give him a copy of my book that he can read and he can be the first one to check it out will my book contain some secret tips uh, well, Tanya, yeah, it will for many people. If you've been watching me a lot, then maybe not, because I talk about all the things. Everything that's in my book is the stuff I talk about here. Okay, so if you've watched me for a long time, you will probably recognize every chapter in this book. But... For most people, most people will be reading it and they have no idea about who I am or what my ideas are. So I think for many, I think for most people, they'll think, wow, these are some great tips that I haven't heard before. 
that's the point, is that I, I really do. I honestly do believe that I have some tips about language learning that I have never seen before anywhere else. So, I think that they're good. What are my ideas, Nor? Well, why don't you go to my YouTube and you can find out. If you go to that YouTube link, that has Teacher Mark's Essential English Tips Part 1. And that's basically like a very short version of my book. Okay, so if you go watch that video, it has all the parts of my book, or almost all of them. Almost all of them. All right, let's get back to talking about goals. Let's get back to talking about goals. And we're going to talk about uh, part, uh, part four, number four, sorry, part four, number four. Number four, are plans and goals the same thing? Thank you for the gifts, Lele. Thank you very much. <clears throat> are plans and goals the same thing? Ahmed says no. Okay, now tell me why. You can't just say yes or no. You have to say no because blah, blah, blah. Yes, because blah, blah, blah. <laughs> there are no yes or no questions in my class. Every question that I ask, I want you to explain. Hello, Hila and Ahab. Could I repeat the question, please? Sure. Are plans and goals the same? Are plans and goals the same? You can't open my YouTube channel. Why not? You're in Turkey. Turkey can Turkey can watch YouTube, can't they? Is is YouTube blocked blocked in Turkey? You should be able to watch it, I think. Um, okay, so try this then. Uh, this is my Hello Talk page, uh, my Hello Talk uh, moment that has all of my links in it. My YouTube link, my Facebook link, my whatever, all my links are there. So if you want my links to follow me everywhere, go there. Okay? Hero says, plans are details and strategies in order to achieve your goal or a goal. Yeah, good. That's a good answer, Hero. Good for you. Nor says, plans can lead you to your goal. Mm -hmm. You are welcome, HTUser581. <laughs> Ciao. All the words says plans allow us to reach our goals. Abdo says plans are what you make to achieve your goals, and goals are what you make plans for. Very good, Abdo. Very good. Hachiko says goals are the peak of the mountain, while plans are how to get to the peak. Very good again, Hachiko. Well said. I, I love your mountain analogy, and analogies are very useful. You know, I use analogies in teaching all the time. Analogies are very important in language. If you can make a good analogy, then maybe you can explain something that's much more complicated than your vocabulary allows, right? So, maybe you only have a tiny vocabulary in English, a small, limited vocabulary. But if you can use analogies, then you can use your limited vocabulary to explain complicated things. Amy says plans are a way to the goal. Bellin says the same. 
Dieptau says goals are outcomes and plans are how to achieve those outcomes. Good. Good. Those are all good answers, everyone. Lily says goals are the destination, but plans are the road to arrive to the destination or to get to the destination. Good. Very good. Excellent. So why did I ask you that question? Why did I ask you about the difference between plans and goals? Anyone know? Why did I ask you about the difference between plans and goals? <clears throat> Ahmed says, because we need to know what materials we need to follow to reach our goals. Okay. Anyone else? To achieve our goals by our plans. Happy says, I don't pay attention to so-called goals. I just enjoy the process. Well, Happy, come on. <laughs> no. You know that life can't happen without some goals. You can't just say, oh, I just la-di-da, enjoy the process every day. No, people expect you to have goals, and if you don't have any goals, then that's going to be a problem for you. So, why did I ask you the difference between plans and goals? I asked you that because many, many people have goals, but not so many people have plans to get those goals. Lots of people have goals, but so many people, they have a goal and no plan. And so I'm trying to tell you the importance of having a plan. Without a plan, it doesn't matter what goals you have. Okay? <laughs> If you have goals but no plans, good luck. Okay? You need plans. But, 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 then there's another part to it. There are three important parts to success. You need a goal. You need a plan to achieve that goal. And then you need to execute that plan. So you need a goal, you need a plan, and you need execution. And almost everyone has goals. <laughs> Maybe half of you have plans, but only half of those people will execute those plans. Less than half of those people will execute those plans. Okay? Solange says plans should be flexible. I agree. Yes, plans should be flexible. Yeah. Um, Solange, there's a funny statement we say in English. If you want to make God laugh, make a plan. <laughs> If you want to make God laugh, make a plan. Why do we say that? We say that because you do need plans and you need to try to make a plan. But plans never, ever go like you think they're going to go. So you, you can make a plan, but you have to be flexible because it's never going to happen the way you think. 
it's always going to be a little different than what you think. All right? So, yes, you need goals, you need plans, and you need action or execution. Okay? Uh, okay. Happy, are you here to learn English or are you here to just kind of talk? Because we're trying to learn English. That's the focus here. <laughs> okay, happy? Productive answers would be good. Okay, we're, pro we're trying to be productive here. Okay? I'm a teacher. I'm teaching a class. We're not just having a chat. I'm teaching. Do you understand? Okay. Yes. So it's important because I want you to understand that if you want to learn English, you need a goal, you need a plan, and you need to execute it. Okay. If you are not making progress, then maybe you need better plans and better execution. Okay. Would I like to talk about linguistics? Mm, no. <laughs> Sorry, Sunset. I've studied linguistics. I have a lot of linguistics books, but I don't particularly like talking about linguistics because I think linguistics is too... Linguistics is not related to language learning. If you want to learn a language, you do not need to know anything about linguistics. That's, that's, that's why. Linguistics is great, but it's overthinking for most people. For most people, linguistic is, it's too much. No, you don't need to know all that <laughs> for learning a language. Okay. So, uh, I like it too. I like linguistics, you know, I like to understand how languages are formed and everything, but it's, it, you know what I mean, Sunset. If you want to learn a language, linguistics is not the way to do it. That is not the same thing as learning a language. Linguistics is about learning the formation of any language. It's how languages are created and how they work. Right? But that's not the same as learning a language, right? Okay? Uh, no, linguistics is not grammar, everybody. Linguistics means how is a language created? How are languages created? How are languages formed? It's, a, it's, it's basically like the philosophy of language. Okay, it's kind of like the formational philosophy of language. Okay, uh, it's not it's not something you need to know about. It's not something you need to know about. It's very interesting. It's a very interesting subject. <laughs> okay, Noam Chomsky is one of my idols. Sunset, you must know Noam Chomsky, right? I have. I have at least a dozen of his books, you know, um, uh, but no, like I said, lim linguistics is not the same thing as learning a language. Okay. <laughs> it's linguistics is language formation, language creation. That's the study of language creation and formation. That's linguistics. Okay. Yes, he's an adorable scientist and one of the smartest men in the world. Yeah. Okay? All right. Uh, so we were talking about goals, but uh, we've covered our topic for today mostly. Okay? So we talked about what is a goal? Uh, what are your short-term and long-term goals? Why are goals important? And are plans and goals the same thing? 
you know? So, yeah. There you go, everybody. Linguistics is the scientific study of languages and how they're formed and created and their purpose and use. All of that. It's very interesting, but it's, yeah, like I said, it's, it's not at all related to learning a language. <laughs> Hello, Kayla. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do now. Here's what I'm going to do. Free time. If you have any questions, now you can ask me. Okay, so if you have other things you want to ask me about or talk about, you can now. I give you permission. Okay? So, who has questions for me? Sunset, I'm sure that I would enjoy having a conversation with you about linguistics, but I think that it would just confuse most of my my followers because it's just not it's not useful for the people who are just trying to learn English. <laughs> okay? How can I improve my English so fast? Uh Hannah, I don't know. I don't know how to teach or learn fast. I only know how to teach or learn well. Okay? Nor, I am 47. How can you be an advanced learner and not intermediate anymore? Well, Flavia, you need to, you need to understand what you can talk about and what you can't talk about. So, Make a list. Just sit down and write down everything that you feel like you can talk about, like topics, right? Friends, family, your job, your school, your work, your goals, your dreams, your past, your present, your future, any of those things. And then write down topics like religion and philosophy and politics and, and then give yourself a score. How well can you talk about those things? Anything that you can't talk about well, that's what you need to start learning more of to push yourself further. Okay, Flavia? Do I think I am an ambitious person? Uh, yes, but my ambitions are just about being better than the person I was yesterday. So... I don't have ambitions for power or money. I have ambition to be a better person. What time is it now, Senna? It's 9.56 a.m. here where I live. Uh, Lele, no, I don't think so, but my, here's the thing, Lele, am I British? Am, am I British? So if I'm not British, then why are you asking me? <laughs> Ask a British person about that question. Hachiko says, I don't have a clear picture about what insinuate means. Hachiko, to insinuate means to talk about something without being very direct about it, but you're trying to get someone to believe something or to think something. So if I say, um, <clears throat> let me think. Uh, if I say that, um, let me think of a good example. If I insinuate that you are lazy, maybe I'm saying, 
uh, well, you know, you could try a little bit harder sometimes, you know, or maybe, you know, maybe you need to take a look at how much time you spend playing video games, right? I'm not telling you you're lazy, but I'm insinuating it. <laughs> Okay, so if I say, you know, hey, maybe you need you need to do this, or maybe you're spending a little bit too much time doing this, and maybe you need to try a little bit more, I'm not calling you lazy, but I'm insinuating it. It means that if I ask enough questions about this thing, then you're going to think that, yeah, wait a minute, if he's asking all those questions, he must think that I am whatever. I am lazy. I am blah, 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 whatever. Okay. So to insinuate means to talk about something in an indirect way to try to make someone believe or think something. Okay. Your goal is to find out who locked your car in the vacancy and some, someone put a huge Dodge Ram in front of you. That sounds like something that would happen in America. <laughs> How to overcome your fear of speaking, Susu. Get over it. <laughs> Susu, why are you afraid of of talking. You cannot die if you say the wrong thing. There are no bears. There are no lions. There are no tigers. There are no sharks. So why are you so afraid? You're afraid of embarrassment, and I'm sorry, but adults are not afraid of embarrassment. Children are afraid to be embarrassed. Adults, not really. <laughs> okay, so if you want to learn, let me ask you this, Susu, what do you care more about? If you are afraid of speaking, then you care more about what people think than you care about your learning. That's what you are telling me. If you are afraid to speak, you care more about what people think than you care about your education. I don't care about what people think. I care about my education. So, Susu, be a language warrior. If you want to learn a language, then you must fight. What do you need to fight? Your fear. It's just talking. There is no good reason to be afraid to talk. If you have an idea and you think you want to say it, then you should. Okay? Thank you for the gifts, Lele. Hello, MG. Tanya says, I have a tip. Pay money and it will greatly improve your motivation to study. That's true, Tanya. You're right. When I went to study drums with my teacher, I paid money. A lot of money because he was a good teacher. And you're right. When I paid that money, it made me realize how important this is because I'm not rich. So money is kind of valuable to me. So, when you pay money for your education, yeah, it's a kick in the butt. It's a kick in the butt, and it makes you realize that stop wasting your time and stop being lazy. Okay? When did I start? I started about an hour ago. Good, Hachiko. I'm glad you understand now. 
What is the difference between either and neither? Taha, uh, I've answered this question many times, but either and neither, when they're used in the negative sense, they can be interchangeable. So you could say, I like neither chocolate nor vanilla ice cream. Or you could say, I don't like either vanilla or chocolate. So when you're talking in the negative, they actually could be interchangeable as long as you remember either always is paired with or and neither is always paired with nor. Either or, neither, nor. Okay? So, <clears throat> um, if you're talking about the difference between something or um, a choice between something, would you like either french fries or potato chips? Okay? I would like neither french fries nor potato chips. I would like salad. Okay? So either could be used in a positive sense. Neither is always used in a negative sense. Either could also be used in a negative sense, too. So either can be positive or negative. Neither is always negative. Okay? You want to improve your listening. Well, then you need to listen more. Can I understand Western Cowboys American English? I can, Frank. I live in America, so yes, I'm, I can understand pretty much everyone here. You find a difference between general English and the English you are studying, biology. Well, yeah. <laughs> we am. There's a big difference between common English and scientific English. English in biology is going to have a lot of Latin. Okay? Because scientific language mostly comes from Latin. Do I think that listening is more important than speaking? Yes, Lele. That's why when you're a baby, babies have to listen before they can speak, right? Lele, you have two ears and one mouth. That should tell you which one is more important. <laughs> you have two ears and one mouth. So listening is twice as important as speaking. How can you improve your listening? Carol, you need to listen more every day. So, Carol, what are you listening to now? What are you listening to? Do you listen to TED Talks? Do you listen to podcasts and live streams? Do you have a teacher? Do you have friends in English? Do you watch videos and movies in English? What are you listening to? Thank you, Lele. Zar says, setting goals doesn't require someone to be a literal striker, like in the context of sports like soccer. Uh, well, right. Setting a goal is just saying, I want to score a goal. But then you actually have to do it. <laughs> right? So a striker can think, I want to score all he wants. But until he does it, he has to do something. Right? There has to be an action. Right? Uh, let's see.
I already answered your question, we um, we um. If you're going to study biology, you need to learn a lot of Latin. You need to know about etymology. Where do lang where do English words come from? So, we um, here's what you need. That website, any English word in biology that you don't understand, type it into that website and it will explain where this word comes from and what the original meaning is. Okay? <clears throat> Thank you, MBS. Oh no, Marius is throwing up because he ate pizza too fast. Ah. <laughs> <clears throat> learn, learn says there are many words that are common between English and French. That's right. That's right. Cafe, right? Uh, déjà vu, rendezvous. <laughs> There are many, many, many English words that come from French. There are many English words that come from Latin. There are many English words that come from Italian, German, Spanish, Old English, Norse, Dutch, Indian, or I should say Hindi, uh, Arabic. English words come from almost everywhere. Yan Li wants to know the difference between lie and lay. Do you mean the meaning or the pronunciation? Jane says, I listen, uh, or no, Jane says, how can I improve my spoken English? Speak. One, you should speak, but uh, Jane Another really good way for you to, to improve your spoken English is I want you to speak English all day in your mind. In your mind, just speak English all day. Whatever you're doing, just think in English. If you do that, when you need to speak in English, it will be easy. Okay? <clears throat> Learn Learn says, I listen to some podcasts, but I don't understand anything, so I feel disappointed. Learn Learn, how many podcasts are there? <clears throat> Let me, uh, I'll be right back, everybody. Let me restart my uh, internet. I'm having some internet problems. I'll be right back, okay? Don't go anywhere. Hello, I'm back. I think it's better now. Okay, so. Uh, let me go back to the comments. Uh, okay, all right. I have a bunch of questions here. Hold on. Let me try to answer my the, all the questions here. So, first, how can you practice speaking? 
There are four steps to speaking practice. Write it down. Step one, go try to find a native speaker. There might be native speakers in your town. If you didn't go try to find them, then you are lazy. If there are native speakers where you live and you are not going to try to speak to them, then you are lazy. <laughs> okay? Go try to find a native speaker. Yes, it would be great if you can talk to a native speaker. Where can you find them? If you find the Western restaurant, you will find the Westerner. Okay, so if you go find a restaurant that serves hamburgers, then there will be some foreigners there on the weekend, and you can ask them some questions. Okay? Step one, try to find a native speaker. Step two, talk to a non-native speaker. Find other people like you who want to practice their English. I don't care if they're not a native speaker. Practicing is practicing. So, if you are not trying to find a non-native speaker because you think, oh, but that's not good enough, then you are lazy. <laughs> Go find another person in China that wants to practice their English. Go find another person in your city who's a non-native who wants to practice their English. And you can help each other. Okay, that's step two. Step three, teach someone. That is the biggest learning tip that I can give you. If you want to learn faster, there's only one way. Teach someone. If you teach someone, you have to explain what you know. That is the best kind of practice that you can do. If you teach two people, that's even better. If you teach three or five or ten, you will learn very, very quickly. Okay, so what are the four steps of speaking practice? Step one. Native speaker. Step two, non-native speaker. Step three, find someone you can teach and teach them what you know. Step four, if you can't find anyone else, then you talk to yourself. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm good, Mark. What's up? Not much, man. Do you want to go have some lunch today? Yeah, that sounds good, man. I heard about a new restaurant that has some really good tacos. Ooh, I love tacos, Mark. Talk to yourself. Talk to the TV. Watch a TV show and say, I like that guy. He's funny. I don't like her. She's mean. Talk. Okay, there. There's the four steps of speaking practice. Okay. Uh, how can you improve your pronunciation? Ashley... Move your mouth more. Look at my mouth, Ashley, and look how much I move my mouth and how big and open it is when I speak. That is why I speak clearly, because I move my mouth. If you want to sound like me, then you must open and move your mouth. Okay? That's step one. Step two. Write down ten words that are difficult for you to say in English. I want you to think about ten words that are hard for you to say. Write them down. Then I want you to look at those words and tell Tell me or look at it and figure out what is the sound that's hard for you in that word. What's the sound that's hard for you? Okay? And then I want you to find every other word that has those sounds in it. And practice those words. That is how you can improve your pronunciation, Ashley. Okay? All right. Uh, and learn, learn. If you're listening to podcasts and you don't understand, so you feel disappointed, then you need a different podcast. Okay? 
Find someone that you can understand well and listen to them. Okay? Hamad, the link is not going to work if you just click on it, but if you copy it and paste it, it will work. Okay, Hamad, copy the link and paste it. How can we memorize vocabulary better and easier? Pakan, you're new. Do you know how I know that? I know that because on every live stream that I do, I tell people, memorizing is the worst way to learn. Don't memorize anything. Stop being a lazy learner. Memorizing is just for lazy people. If you're a lazy person, you don't belong in my class. <laughs> if you're a lazy person, you don't belong here. I don't help lazy people. Sorry. <laughs> Noor says, I have issues in writing English. Okay, what are your issues in writing? Vision, I'm trying to answer as many questions as I can right now. Susu says, accent is important because when we speak, sometimes people look down on us. Susu, no, it's not. It's not important. And guess what, Susu? If someone needs to change, it's not you, it's them. So, Susu, I don't want you to lose your accent at all. I want you to keep your accent, but I want you to make your accent very clear. You can have an accent from Japan and speak perfectly. You can have an accent from Russia and speak perfectly. You can have an accent from China and speak perfectly. You can have an accent from Brazil and speak perfectly. Should I keep going? <laughs> it doesn't matter what accent you have. No one cares about what accent you have, Susu. They only look down on you if you can't speak clearly. But clearly is not the same as perfectly. Do you understand? Okay? Clearly is just, did you understand me? That's it. It's not perfect. It's clear. Okay? All right. How can you improve your English writing? You need to write more, Noor. Start with writing a diary every day because a diary is the best kind of writing that you can do. A diary is something that you can write down all of your thoughts and your feelings and your actions. Everything that you do, you write in your diary. Why is that good for learning English? Because many things you will try to write, you don't know how to write. That's good because that will tell you what you need to learn. Okay, so if you write a journal or a diary every day, you will find many things that you don't know how to say in English. And that is what you can learn. Okay, and that will improve your writing and your English. Okay, Noor? Okay, I have about 10 minutes left or so, about 10 minutes. If you want to raise your hand, am I frozen? I'm frozen. Do 
what is going on? Wait a minute, everybody. I'm having some technical problems. Please wait. I will be right back. Dude, what is going on? Ugh, I'm having some major problems, everybody. I don't know if you guys can uh, 